Life isn't perfect, and neither are we. Nope. But we know how to face our fears. And have some fun. And talk about all the messiest things of life. Like the messiest things. <laughs> get connected to yourself, get connected to others, and get connected to the life right in front of you. This is The Connected Life with Justin and Abby. That's me. That's you. And you. <laughs> oh, you're just going to look at me and laugh now? <laughs> So Abby and I, we just started this off a minute ago and we decided to re- re- restart it off because I had too many sexual euphen- euphemisms. I liked your sexual euphemisms. Euphenim- I just also wanted to, I wanted to tell the story about boogers that we had been talking about. <laughs> you felt the need to tell a booger story. I thought it was funny. It killed the mood. <laughs> and we're going to talk about sex and killing the mood, everybody. <laughs> Today, we're going to we're going to it's it's going to be a, a, a big topic we're going to jump into. Uh, a, a very mysterious topic, Ooh. the female orgasm. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> no. How to I make was her like, have one. Is that what we're doing? <laughs> That's not what I remember Six just talking about. Six easy steps to lighting her on fire. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that would be like our number one podcast. Like, oh my God, Everybody yes. would listen to it. Six easy steps. They'd be like, where has this been all my life? Uh-huh. We brought your best friend Pizzi on again. Woo! Hello, hello. We love having hey, hey. PT here. Um, Do you know why we brought her on for this episode? We are talking about sex. We are. Specifically feminine sexuality. Yes. So men, part of part of this, the, the revealing of uh, the mystery of uh, feminine sexuality is going to give you guys some like ahas and yeah. feminine sexuality. I think for women, you're probably going to get some ahas. And let me tell you guys, you want to listen to this. Um, <laughs> we're we're going to be... Because what it's going to be is it's going to be ammo for you. You're going to go <laughs> grab it and you're going to be like, listen, wife. Listen to this episode. <laughs> so you will have more sex with me. So All your dreams are going to come true. Oh, yeah. This is going to be men's favorite episode. Uh-huh. They're going to give it like they're going to be like just every day. It's going to be texted to their wife again. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Again. Yeah, because we're talking about the mystery of the vagina. <laughs> no no what no, 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 what no. It's and a, it's a cavern it's a cavern full of surprises uh yeah it oh, is. Gosh. <laughs> there's a lot i could say about that uh-huh uh-huh well please jump into that no so, wait listen what? okay go okay i um have had this this is one of the things i teach on the most mm-hmm. yeah is about how sex is actually designed for women because in culture what <laughs> wait mind blown emoji what? <sighs> I know because in culture, what I grew up learning was that sex was for men. And I actually, I had so much trauma about sexuality. I basically, my thought at a young age from watching TV and being around dysfunctional relationships was you have to have sex with your partner in order to keep them. And you have to have as much sex as they want. So they won't have an affair. So, but that's almost your duty. It's your duty, but it's your duty otherwise they will leave you yeah like it is so yeah. it's, it sex was basically a prison to me yeah like it is something i have to do in order to feel love and i and think it, that okay. i think that's culturally like what a lot of women believe or feel like yeah. is that it is a prison i don't know i'm not a woman no so. absolutely i think that culturally we're set up for failure because the mindset going mm-hmm. into it is already um men are sex crave they're yeah. animals and you have to do what you can in order to, to satisfy them. them, in order to right. keep them around. Because their sexuality is out of control. And along that, so we're talking kind of about the stereotypes about women and men. So men's stereotype is all of them want sex all of the time, always. Which, by the way, sh- let's let's just do just a brief, like, our first couple weeks of sex in marriage. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> she broke my penis. <laughs> <laughs> she oh, just, no. I really did. She did and then she cried because I didn't want to have sex yeah because I grew up with this cultural expectation I was and like so, it can't work anymore it's so it's so, so much raw. pain it's so Why, raw. Oh get away from me don't touch it and I was like he doesn't like me because yeah. TV says all men want is sex mm-hmm. all the time mm-hmm. and so I would be like there is no off button for us no you should want to have sex with me again why don't right. you want me yeah how come right. like and the funny thing is I knew I didn't know much so it'd be like we would have sex and like five minutes later I'd walk by him naked and be like why don't you want to have sex with me again he's like I'm so excited <laughs> I know how to talk about this before <laughs> totally I was married a year before Abby got married so yeah we should have given her all the inside the inside tips yeah and tricks. And tricks. And tricks. Uh-huh. Apparently it didn't work <laughs> it though. Didn't help. <laughs> no. But um 
And so I grew up with this big idea that sex was for men. It wasn't yeah. something for women. Yeah. It was just a part of like the things we have to do. Mm-hmm. And I remember when I was 15, me and Pizzi. Okay. I need to introduce you really quick. So Pizzi is my best friend. I've known her since I was seven. She is like my sister friend that you're more sister than friend. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and she's amazing in every way. And that's why I want her on the podcast as much as possible because everybody should listen to her. Cause she's freaking like a sage. But the reason Thank I have you, you on, you're welcome. <laughs> I love you. you are, you're a guru over there. She's like oh, my man. personal guru. Mm. But, um, the reason I have her on is because somehow me and Pizzi, and I'm going to talk a little bit about my journey, but mm-hmm. we made it to a place where we ended up having healthy sexual ideas and concepts and we have great sex lives yeah. and yeah. our sex lives look completely different. They do, but mm-hmm. we have great sex lives. Not that I would know lives. about yours. <laughs> <laughs> I tell them all the but details. But I hear about it. <laughs> but I, I want to add something really quick okay. before you do a deep dive into this whole conversation. Okay. Um, for us men, I've talked about this in past things before, but for us as men, there's this cultural lie that says we are only sexual beings yes. because yeah. masculinity has been terrified to connect to our emotions. Absolutely. Mm. And so because there's generations of men being like, I don't have a roadmap for emotions. Yep. I'm scared of it. There's only permission for us to actually express a sense of love, care, connection through sexuality. So mm. what we've created inside of that uh, cultural experience yeah. is this... Um, place where women are very resentful towards yeah. masculinity and mm. sex because yeah. there's no other outlet because relationally as human beings, we should all be able to connect emotionally and, uh, and sexually as well on both ends of it. But women are over here being told that we don't connect emotionally and right. we've been told we don't connect emotionally. So there's this really dry desert area of yep. emotion, uh, this lack of emotional connection. Yeah. yeah. And so then finally women live with walls up inside of their souls yeah. going, I don't want to do that because it's only going to lead to sex. I'm not yeah. going to get an emotional experience. So if you, if you're all listening in here, we're hoping to break some cultural paradigms also inside of masculinity. Yeah. And hopefully for you as men, you can go, Oh, here's an on ramp to actually, um, not just get sex, but get quality sex. Yeah. This is leading into the idea that when you said you have a healthy sex life now, like I have incredible quality sex yeah. with you. I mean, just this yeah, weekend, do. we banged oh, it out it. In, a, in a fancy <laughs> hotel room repeatedly. <laughs> yes, And we I was did. like, just mind blowing every time that we did it. <laughs> and and right. just so you all know, my wife was a virgin when she came into this. Yeah. So it w- <laughs> I was like, that's the most awkward sentence. What are you trying to say? No, what I'm trying to say nothing? is culture says you have to know, you have oh, to right. like go test yeah. drive. Yep. Yep. Uh, go on a test drive yep. of having all kinds of crazy sex with people yep. and figure out like who you're going to work best with. We, we didn't know what we were doing in the beginning. Totally. Yeah. And we both got to grow in it as we yeah. grew in some yeah. of these concepts that you guys are going to yep. talk about. So yeah. I just wanted to set that up. Yeah. And I'd like to say about men, um, Men are, they're not taught how to deal with emotions like you were saying. And really what culture says to men is the way that you get value is through sex. Mm -hmm. And so I know even like so many men who've been called gay because they don't want to use women. I got called gay all the time when I was out in LA and I'd be like, no, I mean, there were definitely some very beautiful women who wanted to engage sexually with me. Yeah, they did. Cause you're smoking. (laughs) Even with my bald head now. We should stop this recording real quick. <laughs> just run oh, off whoa. to the bedroom. Yeah. Leave oh, Pete in the basement. I'm still sitting here, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey, Pete. Um, no, but but um, in that in that exchange. Pete's here to keep it PG. Uh-huh. I guess so. <laughs> I guess. In that Third ex- wheel. In yep. that exchange, I'd be like, no, I'm sorry. I'm not like, oh, they're like, oh, are you gay? I'm like, right. Yeah. No, I'm not gay. Yeah. I, just like yeah. want to have a healthy sex life. That and happened this for my husband too. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's just interesting and sad how culture completely has it all wrong. And I would just say, even to what you said before, you know, it's so sad because we do say this thing of you need to test drive. You need to make sure that you have sexual chemistry. Your sex life is going to go through seasons, right? So there's oh, yeah. gonna, it's going to be up and down and there's going to be great seasons and there's going to be hard seasons and not one or two or three experiences or however many dictate a sexual, um, 
lifetime. The course of you know? a sexual uh, lifetime. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. they can. I have worked with lots of clients where one or two or three did dictate it, but it's but they allowed they didn't it get to, healing and they didn't get healing. And yeah, they through changed the way sure. that they saw. And a lot of yeah. people have. I will say this: as we're getting into like breaking down like the mindsets and the experiences around it, a lot of people have crappy se- sex lives all because of mindset. Yeah, yeah and we don't talk about. Here's the thing: it is we did an episode um, on weight and the whole point was like looking at what is the underlying belief system that's driving that is the... driving this yes and um, i don't know if it's aired yet but it's coming people um but with sexuality we have so we have a map of sexuality that we are um taught it we're taught it from our parents how we feel mm. like did they like sex did they not like sex yep. i thought my mom hated sex with my dad i mean she did she told me and um, and a lot of that was, happens too to kids. They hear from yep. their parents about the sex lives, and it's usually really yeah. broken. Yeah, and so that created the idea that sex is good for men, but not for women. And then, um, and then culturally watching it. And so what we have is we have the world is informing people about sexuality more than any other thing, and nobody's having healthy conversations. That's yeah. why we talk about sex so much on this podcast because we have to start. It's one of the areas that impacts your identity more than anything else, yeah. but we're not having clear conversations. So I grew up with this idea that sex was for men. And then when we were around 15, me and Pizzi, um worked for a woman mm-hmm. who had a great sex life. Mm-hmm. And I like laugh even now. I'm like, why did she tell us about her sex life? Yeah. Like that's so random. We I, babysat I, for her and we cleaned her house and we did groceries. I think because we asked her and true, probably we asked her tons of questions. I remember one time she's like, I don't know if I should be talking to you guys. About- <laughs> We're like, no, 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 no. We, we, need we, want you. we need to know. But yes. it was so impactful and I'm mm-hmm. so glad she didn't stop. Yes. Because I would say that that probably laid a foundation for Pivotal the good moment. side yep. of how we view sex. Yes. Was she, the way that she saw it. She loved sex with her husband. It yeah. wasn't duty. It was fun. She was always Felt coming fun. up with creative ideas yeah. and adventures and and it was something that really made her come alive. Yeah, she felt powerful yes. when she talked about sex. Like, she didn't shrink back. She didn't, um, you know, act like it was her duty or a chore. Totally. Like, she enjoyed it. She felt totally in her skin and powerful. And I think that that spoke to us more than anything. Yes. And so I remember going back to my mom after, like, having conversations with her. I mean, like, Mom, I need you to pray for my sex life. <laughs> that is my mom's precious. Like, what? <laughs> She's no. like, how much sex are you having <laughs> right, right now? So. <laughs> ah! um, no, but I was like, I knew that for me to have a healthy sexuality, we needed to start turning the tide because I had so much brokenness in my perspective, my perspective hmm. that I knew like I need the grace of God in this area to show up and help me be in a place where this could be something that is thriving for me, Hmm. not shutting me down. And so she did actually start praying. And then at our wedding, she blessed publicly our sex life, which I loved so much. Thanks Susie. Yeah. It it worked. Those prayers worked. Uh. But, um, so we started with her. One of the things I want to mention about why women have baggage is not only things happen to us where we have an experience with a man Mm -hmm. that shapes our experience. I had so many, experiences with men that like drive the nail in your head sexuality yeah. steals from me yes that's what i believed men's yep. sexuality steals from me it ruins my life it takes from me i'm powerless i don't have control and i so i had experiences with men that said that but i also my mom was a huge part of that because she um she had been molested and something that i tell people is trauma transfers Hmm. So her view of masculinity transferred from, from how trauma. she talked about men hmm. and how she related around men. But her view from masculinity also transfers. They say um, they did this study with rats where they um, <laughs> they like made the rat smell the smell yeah, and then they shocked study. it. The okay. rat. And then um, and then from then and they tested the anxiety it had. So yeah. from then on and they any, would continue to do that. Yeah, from then on, any so this is like a daily, like this is was a perpetual right, a repeated thing. Repeated cycle. Okay. So then, well, I don't know how often they did it. Yeah, they I, did. You guys just made up things. No, no I'm just I, I heard that. <laughs> you heard this study. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So then they bring the smell to the rat without shocking the rat, but the rat has all of the symptoms of anxiety and fear right. happening in right. its body because it is now connected that the smell 
is yes trauma yes um which is what happens to our parents our friends us we have trauma we connect it so now Hmm. sex is traumatizing Hmm. sex is scary sex isn't Hmm. fun sex Hmm. is prison and so then what they do is the rat has a baby and they don't torture it with the smell at all while it's pregnant they don't do anything but then they bring the smell to the baby who's never been shocked Hmm. in its life and when they put the smell in front of the baby the baby has the same stress reactions whoa as the mom whoa so it is a really wild thing but so what i'm trying to say is i counsel so many people that their sexual trauma started they would blame it on their marriage they would blame it on their marriage problems but i'm like yeah i listen to their story i'm like no you had sexual problems before you ever met the person you're with yeah you had a map of what sexuality meant you had beliefs about how sexuality was bad Hmm. long before you had reactions and that's not to say we're powerless to our parents but i did have to recognize that spirit of victim mentality with men's sexuality I have to choose out of that. Yeah. yeah. And so yeah, it's I a mindset you really have to break. Yeah. I've gone on this journey and, um, PC has also had created such a healthy mentality. I want to talk about this idea that sex is actually for women. Yeah. Like to dispel the myth that sex is for men. Yeah. So can you break that down? Yeah. I mean, well, the first thing is let's just talk. Let's just talk body. Let's okay. start with the body. Let's go there. Yeah, let's let's go. talk body, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> this is such a funny conversation to have Let me with just you. say, I my get husband... to chime in every once in a while in yeah. the peanut gallery here. <laughs> my husband is not in this conversation, but the four of us talk about sex very All regularly. Yes. So this is not an unusual thing for us to talk about. No. Yes. So, okay. The first thing is women orgasm longer. Yeah. Their orgasms are more intense. Mm-hmm. And we can have more than one orgasm. So yep. just if you look at that We can that too. Fact. It just takes like another 20, 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> if you're lucky. If you're not lucky. Um, so the concept is, even if we just look at biologically, yeah. sex is for women's pleasure. Yeah. Like it is made to yep. be great for us. It yeah. is literally biologically can be better for us yep. than for them. Yep. Um, I think um, another one is, I think personally that there are more places of pleasure on a woman's body hmm. than on a man's. I wonder hmm. if that's true. <laughs> we'll have to fact have, check that one. We, you, we're going to go into the bedroom and then you're going to test, test on me. I'm going to find every spot uh-huh. on your Again, body. Again, still here. <laughs> no. sorry, sorry. But I mean, would you, what do you think about that? Yeah. I mean, I definitely would think that that's true. I definitely feel like I always kind of laugh because I'm like, yeah, it can take more work to get a woman into the pleasure zone. Yep. But when you do, oh. it can be mind blowing. Yeah. You know, it's like lighting off, you know, firecrackers, whole yeah. packs of firecrackers, you light it and they just keep going off. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> like it just doesn't stop. I mean, yes. it literally does not stop. Yes. So yeah, I, I would 100% say that that's true. Like I, and if not that we have more, we at least have the same amount for yes. sure. We don't have less. There's no yes. part of our body that yes. is designed to experience pleasure less than men. Yep, absolutely. So when I look at biologically, I'm like, our bodies are built for it to be good for us. Hmm. And so that is part of the thing that I think we have to begin to change our mindset. Like, yeah. no, no, this is made for my pleasure. Yeah. And I think even too, it it comes down to even speaking it out loud mm-hmm. and stopping thoughts of like, oh, this is a chore or this is taking or I'm a victim in this to being like, no, this is for me. This is good. Yes. And I'm going to get so much out of this. I actually changed. And this is probably the thing that I, if I could tell women how to be powerful in their sexuality, self-talk is one of the most important things. I don't think they understand it. Yeah. But I literally, I have trained my mind that I tell myself, even when we're having sex, I'm like, this is so good for my heart. This is helping me feel so connected. This is helping me feel so secure. This is yeah. helping me feel so alive. Yeah. This is helping me release stress. This is helping me get present mm-hmm. in my body. This is helping me be connected to my husband. Like I go through and that doesn't mean yeah. I'm feeling it when I say yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, that's like what I wanted to say is that oftentimes you don't feel it. Sure. But you start to speak it into existence before you feel it. And slowly you begin to see how your body mm-hmm. aligns with your mind. Yeah. You know, hand raised over here. Yeah, go um, ahead. I think that there's there is um especially culturally 
there was so much shame put on the woman body yes. Yes. for so many years. Yeah. Yeah. And with the feminine sexuality. Yeah. That gen- like when you're talking about the rats, like something trauma right. being passed down, it feels like the all the unspoken things were passed down about like it's bad for like especially like the female orgasm saying female orgasm saying vagina and yeah. even saying clitoris yeah totally. those things are like Ugh! yeah yeah in, inside of so much of culture well and not so, in culture in the church i no no you think in culture that I mean, was so in on culture. hbo it's there no but <laughs> at broad oh yeah the broad spro- stroke historically i'm talking yeah, right. about over feminine oh, yeah, yeah. femininity and i think that that was the, the religion played a heavy role yeah. inside of that throughout Absolutely. all of culture yeah. that demonized it and just in general i think it happened but it was something that was really demonized the body and stuff like that and so it, it's it's been a subject specifically for women where they mm-hmm. haven't been able to go on the journey of finding out even what they think or feel now of course there's the explosion of conversation happening like never before and i love that 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 is yeah. happening mm-hmm. uh, for women but i'm just saying historically those are hurdles totally. that are written into it feels yeah. like written into female d- dna oh yeah from generations, generations. absolutely yes. and that's why i think what you're saying abby is so important it's not a matter of you brainwashing yourself into something no. it's a matter of actually coming back to your true identity yep. yes mm-hmm. because our culture is going against it so you yeah. have to actively retrain your mind yep. In order to, to agree with to truth. come back to, I believe what God always intended for your body yes. for your sex life. Yes, He always intended that I would love sex so yeah. much. Mm-hmm. Like that is what one of my um, really good friends. She um, sat down and she read Caroline's Leaf. I think it's switch Dr. on your Caroline brain, Doctor Caroline. Lee. Oh right, yeah. it's about um, brain detoxes. So yep. you take a belief and you detox it purposefully for twenty one days. So she is sitting down reading the book and she's like, she just asks like, God, what is one belief that I need to detox? Hmm. And immediately she heard sex is for men. Wow. Now she had a great sex life. She okay. thought before then. Yeah. But she, as soon as she heard it, she like knew that's right. I believe wow. that. I believe deep, deep down in my subconscious, not my conscious, yeah. but in my subconscious that sex is, is just for men. Wow. And so she decided to brain detox it. And it was like, I mean, so she practically did something. She went out the next day mm-hmm. and she threw out all of her underwear and all of her bras and she went and bought. Cause they're all new- granny panties. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I mean, they were, they're definitely old and had lost their luster. Their uh-huh. luster. <laughs> but so she went to practically do something to hmm. be like, no, this is for me. Hmm. And, It was like their sex life had a revival. Hmm. She started loving sex more than she ever had. And they started having sex. And he's the happiest guy on the face of planet. Oh, a hundred (laughs) percent. Absolutely. But it was all because your enjoyment will be blocked if you believe that it's not for your enjoyment. Absolutely. If you believe it's not for you, yep. you're never going to take ownership. Yep. And we talk about this all the time, how powerful the mind is. Like the yes. story you tell yourself and what you, your body will subconsciously yes. align with it. So just a quick example is that I did hypnobirthing. I told myself I was going to have a labor within a short amount of time, mm-hmm. focused on it, and I was able to do it. Yeah. You know, it's, I mean, it's, it's a miraculous story. And there's tons. Yeah. But there's tons tons of scientific proof mm-hmm. actual scientific proof if you want to dig into yeah, it yep. just opinion yep not just opinion here that what you tell yourself yep the story that your brain makes up about mm-hmm. something is how it will actually play out yes <clears throat> excuse me in your body exactly and so if you're never going to engage sex with your husband and have a thriving sex life um long term if you believe it's a have to necessary grab on yeah and on that note i've had actually quite a few female clients that have come through my office where female and husband wife and they talk about how she's not really into it because she always has a lot of pain Mm. in her vagina and stuff and there's not any medical reason that really stands out for it and so we start digging into her history and we end up getting into the emotional pain of stuff sexually and we i've seen many many couples where they have gone through a healing process, so specifically the woman inside yep. of sexuality and her history, and, and all of a sudden beliefs, she's like, "I don't have pain there anymore." Healing. A wow. lot of it is because the- our body will store pain 
it to block things. If yeah. sex isn't safe, your body can create pain so yes. that you don't, so right. you're protected and from you having have an right. excuse. You have a legitimate reason. Like if you yeah. feel powerless, especially in childhood, if you felt powerless to some sexual experience, molestation mm-hmm. or something like that, oh, yeah. you need something to give you power that says that your voice is valid. Right. And so I've seen a lot of them, like they have this pain because they can say, yeah, but I'm in pain. Right. Yes. The doctors even acknowledge I'm in pain. See, I'm in pain. We can't have sex right now. Yeah. Right? No, I do just want to acknowledge this because I have had lots of friends yeah. that it actually was a physical issue why they had pain. Yeah. And it took doc, like one of my friends, the doctor said, there's no, you should be fine. You should be fine. And it wasn't until she had her first kid. And when she had her first kid, they were like, oh, you have this thing. And then they gave her a surgery and she was able to love. So there are, I do, I want to yeah, say it's not you, I all. Mean, you've even had, you, you've had, you know, you've had pain in, in sexuality, in sex and stuff physically because of certain things oh, that yeah, happened. Totally. Sicknesses and stuff like that. that so that's real. To... It doesn't mean just jump to like, oh, you got pain, babe. Huh? We'll it's just fake. change your it's mindset. In your head. Yeah. But it's worth an investigation. Yes. Yeah. And, and that's really what and we're going to I think especially if about. doctors have rolled it out, like saying, hey, there's nothing that we see here. Why not go on that journey? Well, and I feel like yeah. go on the journey of seeing doctors and yeah. digging in. Now, can I ask yeah. you guys a question really quick before we move on? If there are women listening who have been through sexual trauma, would you suggest before even starting to change their mindset that they do inner healing or do them together? Because, or do you think that to, you could do it without having to walk an intensive journey that just rewriting the story could actually, um, help fix trauma well i think i always think that there's two different ways that we get healthy and one of them is we get inner healing from what happened and another one is we change our behaviors and beliefs yeah and sometimes you can change your behaviors and beliefs and it fixes it yeah and sometimes you can do inner healing and it fixes it and sometimes you have to do both yeah and sometimes they go back and forth so the healing well, is such what a what you're saying is there's not a black and white it's a gray matter right. but it's worth exploring all parts of right it. Yeah. but okay. something i would say is like if you're a woman and you are in a sexual relationship and you realize I have a lot of wrong beliefs here. I would start like if you have a partner that you feel a spiritual connection with, it'd be great to begin praying. I tell this to couples all the time. You should be praying for your sex life. This is one of the biggest yeah. parts of your marriage. Yeah. I don't know any couple who gets divorced who had a great sex life. Yeah. I don't know couples that like yep. they had a thriving emotionally so connected true. sex life. It's funny. That's a little bit mind blowing, but it's true because now that I'm scrolling through all the couples that I know who have gotten divorced, it's so true. Totally. So I'm like, it should be a priority that we are praying for pleasure, for yeah. great experiences, yeah. that we would love it. And so I would start if you've had trauma in the past that you'd begin with your partner hmm. praying and declaring a new future. Wow. And I think, this is going to be something that brings me life. Yep. And this is what we, I mean, me and Justin did. Sex is going to be something that brings me life. Wow. Sex is going to make me come alive. Sex wow. is going to help me connect more to my femininity, can, to connect more to my power. It's not going to disempower me. It's going to make me feel more powerful. Wow. Sex is going to be a place where I find my voice. Sex is going to be a place where I feel secure and stable. Sex is going to be a place where I feel yeah. loved and, and poured into and I feel intimate and I feel full. Sex is going to be a redemptive thing in my life. Sex is going to be healing in my life. Like mm. I actually believed like sex is going to heal my heart and my soul and my body. Hmm. Like it went from sex is going to destroy me to no, I get to choose yeah. what I want sex to be in my life. And why would this area be off limits for yes. redemption? Yeah. Yes. That feels so dumb. And men, like for those of you that are sitting here thinking about this, like a lot of times women, women feel all ul- ulterior motives. A hundred percent. And so, and, and I mean, I don't, <laughs> but so, that's a real thing that we deal with. So I'm couples. Saying, like, if you have ulterior motives and what I'm about to say, it's, it's not going to work well for you. But like, if you genuinely want to see your wife live in freedom and, and you want to see, uh, a sex a, a sex life that has freedom yeah you can actually step into leading the way and being like babe i want to go down this journey not just so i can have more sex but if you genuinely get into a place of like no i want to discover what it's like for us to fully be connected and know each yeah. other in this space and so you don't have to just be a passenger i've had i've had some couples come into my office where 
the man wants to suggest stuff like that. He's scared of the woman's reaction because the right. woman's really self-protective. Mm. And so he just shuts down, doesn't say anything. And sometimes you're going to have to be willing to do some battles. And mm. doing battles means like being willing to be okay with her being explosive, frustrated, scared, and just being kind, gentle, and patient and being like, hey, I just want to explore this. And if this is a topic right. that's uh, that's off topic, like we're not allowed to go here, that's a problem inside of our yeah. marriage. Even if we don't get to our sex life looking a specific way like someone else's, if right. we can't have yes. these conversations, there's a problem. And that's where it starts. Like, <clears throat> I'm so sorry. When we wanted to change our finances, we started looking through all of our financial beliefs yeah. and then what we wanted our beliefs to be. And mm. we shared the stories that created that and why. And couples should be doing this. They should be sharing like... What are your beliefs about sex? What do you believe? Like husbands should be interested because this will impact their lives. Yeah. Yeah. If they know what is motivating their wife, yeah. then they will understand why she doesn't want to have sex, yeah. why she's avoiding it. Like as soon as, you know, like if a man can catch like, oh, she thinks that this is control. I hate being controlled. So of course I wouldn't want to do that either. Yeah. I would want to rebel too. Yeah. So then we can go on the journey of healing and changing what the story is. But you can't change a story until you actually take time to look at what the story is. Yes. Yes. And men have to be able to be patient. And this is something that... And want to communicate and learn how to mm. use your words and and explore and ask good questions. Yes. And this is where my husband's mentality on sex, if I could give men in the world one thing from Justin, it would be the concept of I'm willing to pay a price now in order for something to be great long-term. Yeah. I am willing to have a couple years. I actually had a friend and she's, um, we'll have her on this sometime, but she was married and she had sexual trauma that they were working through. And their counselor suggested that they not have sex for like a year. Hmm. Wow. And the husband was willing to do it. He's like, Oh yeah, totally. Whatever you need to take care of your heart. Why? Cause the long-term idea, if we can heal yeah. the, and now I don't know that I would ever suggest people not have sex for a year. That sounds um, counterintuitive and productive to me. But what the idea was, she got to say no for the first time in her life yeah. and that, and he saw this actually will set me up for long term. This gain. is empowering yep. her to feel comfortable and safe inside of this space. Now that being yep. said, yeah. I would never, ever, ever like women. You can't demand that your husband not have sex with you. You need. You'd have to have a counselor involved, and even then, whatever. But right there has there has to be some really because like, I've some had I've had women do sides. that thing where they're like, no, I need this to become emotionally healed, but really they're just controlling it. Yeah, and right. they totally enter into control. So that's mode. why sometimes yeah. you need an extra help. But um, so. Pizzi, why don't you share a couple of the things th- where you feel like sex is for you as a woman? Yeah. So I would say right off the bat, one of the biggest things for me in the way that I view sex is that sex is about connection. Yes. And because I view sex about connection, it makes me want to have it often mm. because I like being connected to my husband. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice this. I think that most couples can relate with, you know, you'll be kind of like getting on each other's nerves and you end up having sex and suddenly it just kind of dissipates. Oh, Uh you know, it's like, oh yeah. Like, okay. Just suddenly that issue isn't a big deal. You know, I, I would say that that's typically all the time for us. Like we're disconnected. I feel super, but rather than making my husband jump through a ton of hoops, I know, Hey, if we have sex, it's actually a really fast route to connection. Yes. yes. And I would say soon it's going to bring the walls down. Yep, it's going to bring the walls down. And as soon as we have sex, suddenly something in my heart shifts, actually. Yes. So I so feel good, super Pete. connected. Yep. I feel physically even like way more turned on by him and mm-hmm. connected. And I will say just a really quick example of this would be that my husband toured in a band for a long time. Oh, yeah. So he would leave for long stretches of time. And I would just completely kind of shut down sexually. Sexuality is just... Nah, nah, nah. Yeah. yeah and when real. he'd come back, um, it's funny because it would take me a long time to warm up. Yep. But I realized... I began to realize that if I would just actually have sex with him mm-hmm. before I even felt like... Before you felt the connection. Yes. That it actually turned into me feeling way more connected mm-hmm. and then in turn feeling way more sexually connected. Yep. And it was like all of a sudden our connection was restored in an hour when it could have taken days Yes. You this know? is okay. I'm jumping in it because I'm so excited Great. Jump about in. What you're Do saying. it. 
the myth that women have is that sex is so that men connect to us. Yeah. That's yep. not true. Yep. I connect to my husband through sex. Yeah. So I think you should break down actually what that looks well, like. Well, even the bonding process. Yeah. Yes. The yeah. bonding process and the chase and pursuit type of yeah. thing. Yeah. Well, okay. So um, somebody, a counselor told me this once and it changed my life. They said women bond through sex and men bond through pursuit. And I was like, mm. no, that's not true. But then yeah. she broke it down. She's like, in a one night stand, generally, like stereotypically, who is more likely to have bonded? Well, definitely the woman. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, she's like, men need the pursuit. That's yes. why I actually say no to them. They, yeah. When they pay a price for something, they are more. I remember, Justin, when we got married, like there was no part of him that wanted to have an affair because he's like, this was so much work for me. <laughs> to get you <laughs> why would i yeah. pay this price again right. why would i do anything to ruin the cost yeah. that i just paid yeah mm -hmm. you know and yeah, so so i started to see like okay sex is how women bond yeah Th nobody tells us that no so we think it's for them yeah i have a friend of mine and she is a She's very well known and she speaks and she goes and has sex after she speaks every time because she says it brings her back to feeling powerful and wanted and desired. It like helps her feel wow. connected. Love that. And so like it like covers her where she would feel vulnerable. Wow. And I think that is but this is this is it. Sex is for connection for us. And I'll tell you um, and most men can't get away with this. Justin can because Justin Always let me say no whenever I wanted. Yeah. He yep. because we both have a core value for sex. Yes. No's aren't scary. Yeah. Yes, that's, that's, great, that's great huge. To point out. That is huge. Jump I in. would say, yeah, definitely. Like because when you when connection is the core value, yes, one or the other can say no, and it doesn't feel like rejection, or it doesn't nope. feel, or a yes is not scary. Yes. So when connection is, is the main value, I can say yes to my husband, even when I'm not feeling it. And yes. it's not out of duty. Nope. Right. It's out of love and connection and intimacy yes. and health. Yes. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's like, I know that this core value will bring me life, even though I don't feel it. It's kind of like, yeah, I may want to eat chocolate cake, but I know that eating chicken and broccoli will be more filling. Before. Absolutely. So like, yep. I can make a choice because I know it's going to be good for me. Yeah. But if women don't know that sex is good for them, then right. literally it's like the people who diet for horrible reasons are like, right. I have to eat this chicken and broccoli and I hate <laughs> right. it and I feel right. trapped. It's reward versus punishment. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, um, the the concept of changing the idea that sex is connection. Yeah. So why don't you talk about how um how that works when you're not feeling in the mood? Yeah. So I mean, every woman, I would say my husband is a little bit of a stereotypical man in totally. the sense that he typically wants sex all the time. Yes, <laughs> way more than I do. Yep. Um, Which is funny because we've talked a little bit about how we're we're the reverse where. Yeah. I'm more like, let's get some emotional connection before we get <laughs> totally, this which I just uh -huh. love because it totally. is, uh -huh. which and it's so important too because I've had so many friends in marriage who get into marriage and their husband doesn't want to doesn't want sex as much as they do and they're oh, devastated, devastated, right. and nobody because talks about that. Nobody talks about it, and they feel like something's wrong with them. They feel yep. like something's wrong with their husband, and there's this great divide suddenly yep. in their marriage 100%. when really nothing's wrong. Yes, it's just different. Although sometimes things are wrong. Yeah, sometimes things are wrong, <laughs> but not exactly. All the times. Sometimes things are wrong. But sometimes they're not. Sometimes yeah. it's just different anatomy. Yep. So 100%. so Johnny Johnny wants it more than you. Yeah. So Johnny typically wants it more than me. So that doesn't. So that means sometimes I'm not always in the mood. And I would mm -hmm. say a lot of times I'm not always there right away because I'm a task driven oh, yeah. person. So it takes a lot for me to stop and like yes. change, shift the direction. So what I do is I do the mental talk. Like I'm so excited to connect with you. Yeah. Let's mm. do this. I would say. Honestly, it's very rare that I say no yeah. yeah, because I have such a value on connecting with my husband that anytime and I view sex as connection. So anytime you want to put yourself out there vulnerably have connection and have me. connection with me, I want to have connection with you. Totally. Yeah. And I'm so excited. Now I can like lay ground rules like, hey, I'm really exhausted. I'm <laughs> I totally great here. to do this if you're great to have all the work. Yeah. <laughs> like do all the work. <laughs> you know? Totally. <laughs> but I'm going to lay here and scroll through Instagram. <laughs> yeah. But but I'm in it. I'm here, babe. Yes. Just, I'm totally here. If you're cool with it. I'm totally here. 
<laughs> and the interesting thing about it is because we're so connected in sex now, my husband can tell when I'm not in it mentally because so what good. I struggle with is disattaching, yeah. disassociating from yep. sex, not because of really any trauma, just because I typically am kind of like that anyways. I don't know that that's a you thing. I think that's a woman thing. Yeah, it is a woman because thing, typically. Because I... And our first few years of marriage, I didn't struggle as much because it's like new and you're like, Wah! I'm fine and excited. But then you yeah. get into the routine and the normal and all of a sudden you find yourself thinking about the groceries you need to buy yeah. while you're having sex. Absolutely. One thousand mm-hmm. percent. You're you are solving the world's problems. Wow. Yes. I'm thinking about He's nailing you. Usually. No, <laughs> you, you better don't have not room be. To be thinking about anything. <laughs> <laughs> I've asked him questions before. He's like, what do you mean thinking about things? I'm doing this. <laughs> I know. I will say this is just a funny side note, but my husband's really good at holding out for me uh-huh. and I always that's ask so him nice. like what's your tips and he's like oh I just do math in my head <laughs> like math that's really hard to figure out I like start doing math equations in my head just to hold on longer yeah. that is freaking Isn't that hysterical. funny it works I'm trying to think what I do to, to like to hold out longer to hold out longer. I should try math sometime <laughs> I think I start thinking about world events or something. Or <laughs> Depressing to, things. Respond, responding to people on Facebook. And <laughs> Just <to that>. <laughs> okay, so, so you anyways. can disattach. <laughs> yes. Um, sorry, so that one more time. But you were talking about how you can disattach. You can yeah, disattach. so I can just typically, yeah, detach from sex. And so my husband will honestly stop mid-sex and be like, hey, where's your mind at? You're yes. not here. Because one of the things for our marriage that was really difficult is – um, so I just, it sounds weird to say this, but I naturally kind of have a sexier you disposition. So sexy. You have Not, a sexy personality. It's, I don't try to, no. I think I'm being cute and it comes right. off as sexy totally. and I'm always like so bummed cause I'm like, oh, I think I'm like cute girl. <laughs> um, it's hysterical. But also I think part of that, even like I grew up being in plays and dancing yep. and performing and being very confident. Yeah. I've always been really confident. I know how to turn it on. Yeah. So when we got married, I'm like, oh, I know how to do this. I know, I know how, how to, how to turn it on. I can dress up for you. I can make you want me. And I began to realize in our marriage that I would, every time I would dress up, my heart would leave. Wow. So I was there in my body. So emotionally and, disconnect. I would emotionally all, disconnect. All yep. So I was there in body. I was doing all the things that made him happy, but I wasn't there. Right. Yes. My heart wasn't there. Yes. And I remember I was praying about it. And I remember I came to my husband and I'm like, hey, I think I need to stop like dressing up for a while because I've noticed this pattern. It's huge. See, this is what we're talking about. Self-awareness and sexuality. Actually being connected enough with yourself that you are aware of what is driving you and what's going on inside of you. It's not just a routine that you do and you don't think about. You're actually paying attention to your heart through this process. Yep. And so I don't think he was ever aware of like whether I was there or not before then. But I began to realize it. I brought it to him. Mm -hmm. Suddenly he was clued in. My husband was like, yes, it was that same thing, that maturity of I'm going to withhold pleasure now right. to get it later. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So he was like, yes, let's go on the journey. Mm-hmm. Let's not do this. What do we need sex to look at? Like, That's you know, a great question. That is a great yeah. response. So it looked very plain. I needed it <laughs> to look missionary style every day Honestly. with all of our clothes on and the lights off. <laughs> totally. <laughs> totally. But because I knew that I needed to feel safe and I needed to get into a space where I was showing up and being present. Yep. So I needed to feel like there was no frills. There was nothing. It was just him and I yes. connecting. Which I think this is huge, especially in culture now, because we have learned to play the part, yeah, to play the role. Yep. But mm-hmm. then you're not emotionally connecting, and that's the point of sex. And so if you're not doing the point, then it is going to be empty, and it's going to feel like work. And I truly believe, had I not gone on the, this was we've been married for 12 years. This may be year two, so this is 10 years ago. Had I not gone on that journey, we'd still be having disconnected sex to this yes. day. And, and that's where, you know, it gets into – People adding a lot of crazy things into sex and then burning out and being like, sex is boring. And sex is only boring when we don't, when we've, because it's like, okay, yeah, it's boring if I'm disconnected from my emotions, my heart, and the actual experience of the person. And now we're just doing the same thing. So now the lingerie turns into leather and leather turns into all kinds of things. Because you constantly need that high. You're trying to create a high of something new rather than actually being fully present with someone and having 
an encounter internally. Yep. Whereas like when we do something fun now, it is so much fun afterwards yeah. to laugh about it and be like, oh my gosh, you know, we're talking about it for two days. Like that right. was crazy. That was so fun. You know, yes. that kind of uh-huh. stuff. Yep. And it's not anything new, you know, it's just fun because it was connected. But, right. you know, so I think on that journey, I had to really learn how to connect myself. He then in turn got really connected with me and knowing when I was present and when I wasn't. Which is yeah. huge. So then he because could. now a sex is a place Johnny. that you're feeling yeah. known. It is. Yeah. Now that, you're yeah. feeling known. Sex isn't something that where he's checked out just yep. getting his own pleasure needs met. Yep. He's paying attention to you enough to care for your heart. So now it's yep. not all about him. Pay attention yes. to your ladies, guys. Yeah. No, Pay this attention. is like this episode men need. Yeah. 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 Well, and I really, I mean, this is a little bit of a rabbit trail, but it's worth mentioning. You know, I really realized in there that like me focusing on learning how to have an orgasm was way more pleasurable and a fun experience for both of us 100%. and for him. So then that became my priority as well. And yep. his priority as well totally. is like, okay, yeah. we're going to make this really great for you. We're going to mm-hmm. learn what makes you come. Yep. We're going to learn what makes you feel good. And yep. we're going to go on that journey together. Yes. And so then we could start reintroducing things like lingerie or whatever it was, because now suddenly my heart's connected. So those things are so much more fun yeah. because it's not a fake persona. Yeah. Yep. It is an expression of your sexuality. Yep. And sometimes I'll still like completely disconnect mm-hmm. depending on the season that we're in. Yeah. yeah. And we'll take a step back and totally. go back to connection. We're yep. going to go back to simple to get connected. Yep. And then we're going to reintroduce those things when we're ready. Yeah. You know, type it's of thing. It's so good, Pizzi. Oh, I think thanks. this is something that so many uh, women and men, because this culture, when you're having sex with anybody, yeah. it's not in the covenant of marriage then it is a performance driven yeah. thing where, so yeah. you are having to be a persona to get your power, to get them to like yep. you, to get them to want you. Yep. And that is why sex ends up disconnecting you. I, I t- say this to people all the time. Like I grew up and the church was like, don't have sex before marriage. And it was really just this rule that was like, God will hate you if you do. Yeah, and nobody bro- really knows. Shame mentality. And yeah. Yeah. yeah, but no one really knows why. Why are we not having, and I like, as a mentor, I've had so many students and people that I've been over come to me and be like, I don't understand why we're not supposed to have sex. And I'm like, totally. One of the reasons is that when you are performing in sex, you have to disconnect from the core of you. Yes. And so if you are having sex with people that there's no long-term commitment with, then you are having to perform. Yes. Well, not only are you having to perform, but you're having to keep your walls up. Yes. Mm. Because like... Oh, I know this person is going to be gone tomorrow. They're not yep. safe. Totally. Yeah. To let them really close to me. So I'm not even getting to the goods, like to the steak. I'm, I'm eating a McDonald's hamburger because I'm not actually being able to pull down my walls and actually experience another human being. Right. Yeah. And know that it's going to be okay because they're going to continually be there for this experience together. And in sex, you're actually making body memories. So if you make a memory that every time you have sex, you disconnect from your body. Yep. Your body starts to do that subconsciously without yes. you even choosing yeah. to do it. Yep. And so I remember we have a friend who they masturbated every morning. <laughs> and so then when they got married, they always wanted morning sex because oh. their body yeah, had a memory. Used to having an orgasm. That I get yeah. orgasms in the morning. Well, their yeah. spouse didn't. liked orgasming at night. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so yeah. now there was like. The, I just want to get up and get the morning going. This yeah. is what I'm saying. Like we have the power to begin at any given point. You can retrain your body. Yeah. But this is one of the reasons why making good decisions with your body empowers yeah. a future of great sex. Right. And I will say this on the flip side. So now my tendency sometimes can be that I'm so focused on getting myself to pleasure that yeah. I forget about my husband. <laughs> Honestly, it's the truth. And now I have to go to the other side of saying, Hey, sex is about connection. So what's fun for you? Right. Yeah. And even if it doesn't necessarily make me feel turned on, totally. what's good for you? What makes you turned on? What makes you feel connected and that mm-hmm. this is fun for you? Totally. And so it's really, it's not really one or the other. It's yeah. really of always keeping connection central. Yes. And if connection is central, then you can then kind you're of giving and receiving. Yep, you can govern yourself within connection. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I like, even in that as a side note, like that's something as a man, I enjoy the journey of trying to get you off. <laughs> but, yes, you do. But it, it's like it becomes something fun to, to do that. And I'm talking into that because culturally, you know, there's this idea that men don't care. They just take. And they just take. Yep. And I think men 
don't even haven't even been they've been told like you can't please a woman yeah, basically right. at the end of the day that you know it's the whole conversation of the mystery of the clitoris and you're yeah that can't happen and you can't even give a female an orgasm actually you can if, if a woman actually decides sh- like what you guys are talking about this is for me then there's hope for a man yeah because what happens is that when men can't win at something oh, they, they lose hope they quit and they do make it even about mm, them a yeah. situation like all right well then i might as well you know, like I'll I never be get able to, off. I'll, yeah, I might as well just get off because I can never get my wife to that yeah. place, and she feels like it's a chore. And so, if a woman gives a man a place to actually win, then he goes, "Oh my gosh, this becomes right a playground." Yeah. <laughs> and you know, I will say this too because I just thought of this story on our wedding night. My husband and I were virgins going into sex, and I remember that we made a commitment to each other on our wedding night that it wasn't gonna be about what it should look like or about me having an orgasm it was going to be about us getting to connect yep and so we established that on our on our wedding night and basically taking the pressure off yeah of trying to have an orgasm then made it so that like i have great Wonderful. orgasms now yeah you know because i didn't feel pressure it was about connection totally so and i truly believe that women should be orgasming Orgasming, 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 <laughs> orgasming. <laughs> Say it again. Orgasming. <laughs> Everyone together. <laughs> orgasm. <Yeah. laughs> um, you know, I truly believe that if you're... I was just picturing the people like in the gym listening to this. <laughs> Everyone together. <laughs> orgasming. <laughs> you get an orgasm, and, and you, you get, get an orgasm. orgasm. <laughs> and you Thanks, an Obra. Orgasm. <laughs> oh, but I. Tr- I truly believe that you should be having sexual pleasure. You should be getting there within your marriage. Yeah. However, when connection is central, it doesn't become like that's nice the takes. victory. Yep. That's the victory. Yep. You know what I'm saying? It's the connection. So if I yes. do, if we do happen to have sex and I don't get there, I still it, feel excited about yes, it. Yes, because yeah. it's connection. Yeah. I still feel totally bonded. I'm still like, and my husband doesn't feel defeated. Right. Because he knows totally. he can get me there and that like we're together in this. Totally. And I yeah. remember in our first few years of marriage, this was so helpful. And I wish... I, anytime I meet a newlywed couple, I ask them like legit, tell me how sex is going because nobody talks about it. Yeah, and absolutely. I remember when we got married, you'd been married a year before me. Yeah. And so we had lots of open conversations and you would, it'd be like, Oh, tonight we tried this thing and it didn't work. And then, yeah, but, um, and there was, uh, that happens with every couple. There's yeah. moments where you just miss where yep. like you miscommunicate. Oh, absolutely. Things just don't go the way you yep. expected. Uh, yes. And so um, it can feel very defeating. It can be except the thing about our our posture towards this was yeah. the connection mattered. So I don't feel like we have a horrible sex life. Yep. If you don't spiral, mixed, I don't feel like this is how yep. our sex life is going to be forever. Yeah. And a lot of men, I think, end up having fear yeah. and then yeah. they get controlling and weird. They're like, what if it's like this forever? What if she'll never be pleased? What if I yeah. never can have like, what if she says no and she never wants sex again? And I know for my husband, too, is even a level of defeat. Right. That he had to process through, like, if I didn't orgasm or it didn't work out well and then it just got frustrating. What? Right. Because there's also there's also this sense of um, inadequacy. Yeah. So there's a lie in sexuality culturally prevalent of, like, if you couldn't please the woman. Then right, you're not a man. Then you're not a man. Yeah. yeah. And, and especially when you're in a culture of cycling through lots of sexual partners yeah. you know that your partner man or woman is comparing you to someone else absolutely mm. because it's it's all about a game of like who's giving better sex right. and making that happen better and so there has to be something when it when you get rid of the measuring stick yep. right Instead of measuring like... Instead how, of measuring your stick. Uh-huh. <laughs> it, it's long. Well, Again, still here. It's still here. <laughs> Everyone's still with us here, Abby. <laughs> thanks for proclaiming that, though. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but when you get rid of that the like that measuring stick, you go, how are we going to measure our like the quality of our sexual life when it comes down to... Did we find, did we go on a journey of figuring mm, out how to connect inside yes. of that? Even when everything fell apart, but totally. we came out on the other side yeah. of like loving each other, feeling closer. Yes. Okay. Then awesome. We really were successful inside of that. And then a man walks away going like, I feel like I can win. Mm. Yeah. I won her heart in this yep. moment. I exactly. won getting to connection. I won opening yes. vulnerably up Absolutely. with her. Um, yeah. That's so, so good. That's so good. Yes, I want so to good. just um, mention just, two or three more reasons why sex is for women and then wrap this up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And it has to do with what you're saying about you, like 
thinking about other things and getting disassociated during sex. That happens to me too. And sometimes that's the reason I don't want to have sex. I'm like, it's so much work to shut my mind down. Yeah. It is so much work to stop thinking and to stop doing like, no, I'm being productive. I have to like, and all of a sudden a couple of years ago, the switch flipped and I was like, this is why sex is for me hmm. because I am meant to have to be connected to myself. Yes. Being connected to myself brings me life. Getting out of my head, getting out of the rat race, getting out of my to-do list. It's like having a forced vacation. Yeah. Because in order for me to get into sex, I have to set everything shut, shut everything else down. Yeah. And like the truth is, depending on my hormones, I don't always I'm like you. I very rarely because my hormones are unbalanced feel turned on and that's why I want sex because yeah. my body is ready. Yeah. I often want sex because of the connection part. But what I have found is when Justin um, and me need to have sex and I might be like, Oh, I want to think about all these things and it is work. I often have to have him. And I think I've said this before, pray for me to be yeah. able to be present, speak to my body. He'll actually say, Abby's mind. You don't have to worry about everything right now. This mm. is not the time to figure out all of your problems. Mm. But what I'm saying is sex forces women to become one with themselves again. Yeah, that's so good. It is the invitation for us mm. to be fully aligned with who we are, to be fully aligned with us as a, a feminine being, to get back into our bodies, to get out of the stress of life. Like it is legit for us to have to yeah. fight the battle to get out yeah. free from our minds. So you're really saying it's like a recentering. Yes. It's it's literally like a jump start, a mm -hmm. reset. Yep. Just by having sex. Yeah. And so instead of looking at the battle, like, yeah. oh, I'm going to have to fight through all of these things. I'm going to have to really focus. I don't want to do this. Yep. Instead of thinking that way, the way I look at it is like, oh, it's going to be so good for me to have to shut my mind down. Yes. Oh, it's going to be so good for me to fight to be connected to that. Justin. Yes. I can get so busy that like he... Like I have to stop my brain to focus on him. Yeah. That is work. I think connected sex takes more work. Yes. But it's more fulfilling. I want to ask a question. Um, what would you say to women out there who don't know this, but they're actually living disconnected because they have a problem with their body? So I think about all the women who are like, they actually hate their body. They want the lights off. They're actually doing lists inside of their head or thinking about things like everything else. Because if I have to get present here, all of a sudden I have to be very self-aware right. of how my body looks and how he might respond. I mean, do you guys yeah. have any input into well, that? Well, I would say first off, right off the bat, you're the one who's discounting yourself. Yeah. I right. would say typically men, yeah, they're like, whoa, they're like, hey, I'm just happy to see the your naked boobs. Body. I yeah. don't care if they're droopy. I don't care <laughs> totally. like, if they're Give small. <laughs> yeah, I don't actually care. I just want to see your boobs, you right. know? And I would say even for me, I have great self-confidence, but it took me a long time to really trust that my husband was speaking the truth when he said like, hey, I really like just like the way that you look naked. I don't need it to be anything else. And so then I actually then had to push myself to not give in to my own battle of wanting to shut down because right. then I wasn't being present or showing up. So that looked like done 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 having sex with the light on in the middle right. of the day yeah letting totally. him see me mm -hmm. which he wanted to do and i really didn't want him to do because it felt too scary and vulnerable that yes. meant having sex on top where right. he could fully see me uh -huh. full view the full view and it felt scary and i didn't like it but i knew that i had to do the action of breaking out yes. of the mindset so yes. then again it's it's, it's the action paired with what you tell yourself it's exactly. saying i'm going to take steps towards what looks like healthy but then I'm also going to tell myself, hey, you're beautiful. Your mm -hmm. husband desires you. Yes. Your thighs are You have are to take hot. control over your sexuality. And that is yep. talking to yourself like this. Yep. Actually. Your thighs exactly. are hot. Yep. yep. And I would say a lot of people think that they are so passive about it. But yes. it's really the action of changing it yourself, saying, hey, let's have sex with the lights on. Right. And I don't like this. And you can be honest with your husband and say, I feel scared. Yep. I feel vulnerable, but I want to break out of this because I want to give all myself to you, totally. you know? And I love like Abby, when you come to the table and you want to like, uh, express yourself inside of sex. Like it turns yeah. me on more. Because yeah. Like, oh my God. She's fully here. She wants to do this. It's totally. not like I'm having to fight to pull her out. 
she's she's after me and she knows what she wants and she's okay with herself and she knows that she's good with, with yeah. herself and, and this the body. is women it's need to confidence. one of the things i you know you talked about this earlier when he was gone your sex life would shut down and um actually the more we have sex the more we want sex is how our bodies 1, work 1000 percent i can and so speak if to you're that. waiting to want sex to have it yep then you are actually postponing the thing but what i tell people is sexuality is like a baby you mm-hmm. have to feed it you yep. have to nurture it. You have to take care of it, especially the first few years. I'm like, yes. listen, you, it is like a an infant. It can't walk or crawl. Like you will grow. You'll create a sex life that is healthy. And maybe you're not just married, but maybe you've had a bad sex life your whole life. And so you've got to think for the next three years, our sex life is an infant because it yeah. hasn't I'm grown. We're jumpstarting something gonna, brand new. But yeah. the idea is like Pete's saying, like I'm going to intentionally engage my sexuality. So I'm going to tell myself mm-hmm. I have sexy thighs. I have a sexy body. Like I like my, you know, talking to yourself and not just about why you're beautiful and why your husband likes you, but also talking to yourself about why sex is good, how it's good for you. Like yep. intentionally living to feed healthy sexuality yep. because yep. the more you feed healthy sexuality, the more unhealthy sexuality starves. Yep. And I will say this women, no man wants to have sex with a woman who is completely just laying there disconnected and totally. shameful about yep. how they look. Absolutely. That's honest. And that's probably hard for some people to like, Oh, you really said that, but yeah. I love that it came from you. Yeah, absolutely. Because I know firsthand, right. you know what I'm saying? And my husband's like, I'm not interested in having sex with somebody who's just laying there and disconnected yeah. and who's embarrassed about the way that they yep. look. Yeah. I want somebody who's fully engaged and showing up. And when I realized that, and typically I would say when I'm like counseling people, it's almost always true that the man is like, Hey, I don't actually care. Like, right. I just want you to be here. And yeah. I will, I'll say that even on the flip side, like women, when it comes to a man, just who's living a life, who's disconnected from his emotions, hmm. that's it. It's the exact same cycle where exactly. women good. look at it and go, I'm not attracted to you. I don't want to be close to a man who's exactly. disconnected from his emotions yeah. over there. It's not attractive because yep. you're not engaging life. You're not showing up yep. here to be present inside of this relationship. Yep. And it happens in and out of the bedroom. And I yeah. do think the men who are all about the body and all about like perfectionistic standards and who um, are all about performance, it's because they're not emotionally connected. Absolutely. It's true. They it's are not. Absolutely the true. men who who are critical and intense that you can't be you with. It's often because sex is the performance, not the heart yeah. connection. Yes. And they have to, they have to start going on a journey of figuring out. And like, that's why I think both genders to have a healthy sex life, both the husband and the wife have to have whole sexualities and not yeah. whole, like they have to be fixed and perfect. Whole is probably the wrong word. They have to have sexualities that they are growing in towards health. They're choosing to purposely engage and ask questions about and explore. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Okay. So my last thing, because I really wanted to make sure we hit all of the reasons why it is so important that sex is for women. And the last one is anxiety. Mm. Orgasms release endorphins. It like hit me the other, it hit me yeah. like a couple years ago where I was like, I remember being young and I wanted to masturbate when things got complicated yeah. or painful or like yeah. was overwhelming because the endorphins release, <laughs> yes. they give you a sense of like, Oh my gosh, I'm going to be okay. There's serotonin. Yes. Whoa, I feel high. Yes. And I think like something happens where you feel that and then you get married mm. and it changes where like no longer does sex represent the high. It now represents all of your issues with connection. It now represents all of your issues yeah. with your body. It now represents all of your issues with having to choose to be present. Yeah. So now sex doesn't represent the high. Yes. And so what I did is I purposefully started telling myself, like when I'm stressed, because oftentimes when I'm stressed is when I don't want to have sex. Yep. Because I've got so much thoughts. So now I tell myself when I'm stressed is when I need sex the most. God gave me a method that pleasure could help release the heaviness of life for me. It could help take off the stress, the depression, mm. the frustration. So I'm like, sex is a happy shot. Yeah. It is, so if I'm struggling, <laughs> yes. even shot. here's the truth. When I have headaches, I want sex. Cause I'm like, I need my body to feel something pleasurable. I need something good. In my I need body. something good. Instead of I have a headache, yeah. I can't have sex. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like I really exactly. do think that it like we, so if you think about sex differently and I know we could talk forever on this and there's so many, many different things to dive into and i i know we don't have time tons of conversations in the future we will but one thing i just want to say is women 
There are so many reasons. If you start to look why sex is for you and how it is good for your life, how it Mm -hmm. benefits you. And if you begin to even just pray that God would transform your mind, that if you can just take masculinity out of it for a minute, like, no, this is to force me to own my body more. This is to force me to be more confident. This is to like force me not in a dictatorship way, but in the invitation way. Yeah. Yeah. This is an invitation for me to actually face things that I've been running from or don't want to look at. Yeah. Yeah. So it's for my body. It's for my stress. It's for my connection. It's for my emotional Mm. security. I feel more emotionally secure when I'm having consistent yeah. sex when we have, and it's not, it's a conscious, it's a subconscious thing that I've begun to make conscious where like, I will tell myself when we're having sex, this is helps me feel so wanted. Yeah. This helps me feel so covered. This helps yes. me feel so. And so now I actually am aware when we don't have sex, I'm like, Oh, there's like, this is a bummer. Yeah. But not because it's a bummer. Cause what if Justin runs and, screw some other girl it's not a fear based it's not right. fear based anymore yeah. i'm not in prison yeah. to sexuality anymore yeah. i'm delighted by sexuality yeah, yeah. i i want to add something that that is a little bit off topic but is no in, i mean because uh, we're wrapping this up but i started thinking about women vilifying men and so we have the the conversation where there's actually men who are really not fun to be in marriage with totally. or in yeah. relationship Absolutely. with yeah. and Absolutely. really have a broken sexuality. Yeah. yeah. And so that's something that needs to be addressed. And that's a, that's a conversation for another day. But one thing is, is that I believe that there are a lot of women out there that because that they've been through a history of pain yeah, or they've seen a history of pain in their family, yeah. um, that they create a large case against men inside of the marriage. Absolutely. And a lot of them will be listening, being like, yeah, but you don't know. My husband's not safe. He may not be. But what if, what if for one second you've built a, built a very large case and made a villain out of your husband, out of this man, because making him a villain gives you uh, justification, justification to stay uh, in a place that's um, complacent and not actually facing fear. So some of you, if, if you're looking at it going, yeah, but my husband's horrible, I would say pause for one second and ask, okay. But you can't change him. You can't change him. So yeah. you can ask the question, do I actually have something that supersedes this relationship yep. in an area of pain and problems yeah. with regards to sexuality and my belief inside of that? Because right. ultimately my dream goal for women who are listening inside of this is that your heart gets healed. Yes. Regardless of whether or not your husband yep. and yes. you yep. work out things and totally. maybe he yep. is a villain over there and there needs to be like yep. counseling you need to, <laughs> that yeah. needs to happen for that. But can you become powerful? Can you become connected to your own body? Yes. Can you find yes. beauty over your your sexuality. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. And I, I think that's really important. I don't have the power to change how my husband responds. Yeah. Yep. I only have the power to change me. And yep. sometimes, and sometimes that means you have to see a counselor to figure out what are the healthy ways that I can change me if my husband never changes. Yeah. What are the healthy ways for me to take ownership? But this whole thing is women take ownership of your sexuality. And I did want to end with one disclaimer We did talk about orgasming because we do believe that women are designed to get to enjoy sex through orgasms. If you have never orgasmed, there is no shame or condemnation in that at all. And there are lots of different reasons that that happens. And we'll probably do an episode about things that can block orgasms. Um, But I would say that if you can... um, Cause that one will just cripple you if you feel shamed. Yeah. Like I should be able to do this. Right. Shame never broken? produces you yeah. being blooming. So if you yeah. could even it's counterproductive, it's counterproductive, like hating yourself or feeling disappointed or feeling like no man will ever be happy or faking it forever. Like that will all hurt your heart. So I just want you to like, know that, um, this isn't where your story ends. No, but, absolutely not. And if you even just begin to start the journey with what I'm saying, like beginning to tell yourself sex is meant for my pleasure. Right. Yeah. Sex is meant to be for me. If you start to um, train your mind to think about sex as for you, not against you, because the mind is so powerful in sex. Absolutely. Um, and there's so many different reasons women don't orgasm. I can't even go into it now. But yeah. I just want you, if you would begin to engage God 
and um and healthy sexuality beliefs i think that will be a good starting place absolutely not saying that now you'll magically orgasm but it is the beginning of inviting healing into your heart that's great that is really so to wrap this up is this where we cue madonna's when i think about you i touch myself oh like a virgin (laughs) like a virgin wrong song but yeah yeah Mm. Well, the, the, there's they're both. Yeah, they're two separate ones. Those yeah. are two yeah. different songs. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they, you know, Madonna talked a lot about sex just like we did today. Yeah. That's so yeah. full circle. And she impact, impacted culture. That's and I hope that we will too. impact culture in a different sexual way. Yes. Yeah, that's <laughs> so great. So if you're a woman listening, I would love for you to take time to write out what your beliefs are about sex. Yeah. And what you want your beliefs to be about sex. Absolutely. And I make my clients research like all the reasons sex is good for women. Like so that you start to build a logical case for what we're talking yeah. about. And men, I, have, I would. I have one for Oh, men. you do the men. Yeah. yeah. And I would say really quick to women, yeah. a great place to exercise um, your mind is in the shower when you're naked. Oh, that's great. You do it uh, every few days. Mm-hmm. You're naked anyway. So <laughs> Some people do that every day. Please. Yes. Um, not us, but. <laughs> yeah, not us. I should say most people do that every. Most people shower. A yes. Yes. <laughs> But um, it's just a great time to actually speak words of life over your sexuality and your body. Oh, that's so wise. Yeah. That's why you're my guru. I know. And that's explore so other good. things. So. <laughs> Anyways. Men. <laughs> What's your homework? Uh, men for you, I, as you're listening to this, I think, one, uh, you you can explore, like, am I actually connected to myself as a piece of homework? Like, am, am I showing up? Am I emotional? Am I engaging the relationship in an emotional way? Or am I operating from old cultural paradigm that says I'm just a sexual creature and that's it. So I would say that like you should check in and see where your thoughts are on that. But I think as far as it goes to relating to women, I think that there should be conversations that you begin to initiate that says, Hey, in this area, how can I help you? Hmm. How can I be an active participant here in this Hmm. space? And I'm giving you that homework to start those conversations because I know after meeting with so many couples that it's just a terrifying area because there's been so many problems and ups and downs and, and just being like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to live a brave and courageous life where I initiate these conversations, even if they get messy. And if it doesn't work out right the first time, I'm going to come back multiple times over and over again and be like, I'm not running from this, babe. Yeah. We're not going to have fear in this area of our life. Yeah. We're going to we're gonna go on discovery together. We're going to cry together and we're going to cheer together. We're going to go through all the, all, the, all the motions of everything. But being willing to gently and kindly go initiate that, I say, go do that today. Yeah, yeah. which let me just say would be like one of the most manly things you can do hundred percent for a woman. Like, yes. whoa, uh, you know, whoa, whoa. Like what just happened? Yes. Yeah. yeah. You'll win major points. One last thing I did want to mention that Pete has told me before is that, um, she can be feeling like anxiety during the day and not really know what's going on. And oftentimes after sex, she will immediately just like hear an answer like, oh, this is the thing that was actually bothering me or this is the thing that I'm thinking about or have fear about. And she, her theory is that it's because she's connected to herself more. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that connection and that security actually helps her brain let go of the feeling enough to figure out what's going on. Yeah, totally. So I just wanted to add that in since we're saying all the reasons it's good for us. Yeah, go. Okay, so I'm going to do a big left turn right now. A weird left turn. A, a weird left turn. You guys are going to be like, ew, why would you why? do that Why? Why would me? you associate these two things? Why would you do that? So um, I want to talk about we just have begun releasing the Father Series. It hasn't come out yet, but we are, it's in it's, pre-orders. It's up for pre-orders right now. You can get it for um, discounted right now. Different discounts for yeah. however many you buy. Fine. But um, the reason I bring it up, you're like, why would you bring that up in the sex episode? That's so gross. Ew! <laughs> but um sex is all about intimacy that's what yes. we've been talking about and connection and regardless if you want to think about it or not your relationship with your dad both for men and women so affect your ability to have intimacy Absolutely. emotional intimacy we're not saying that they affect your actual sex but they, but they affect the the heart posture they affect your yep. walls that they, you have up they affect your ability to receive love and give and your love. beliefs on sex yeah Oh yeah. There's all kinds of, I mean, so many women, I worked with so many clients who their dad's sexuality is the reason they struggle with sexuality with their husbands. Yep. 
like the way they saw their dad treat women affected how they relate yeah. to their husbands. It's a very full circle thing that our family, where we grew up, gave us so many beliefs, a map for how to navigate the world. And so our desire was to help people rewrite that map, to figure out what the map is actually yeah. telling them, what ways it's actually affecting them so that you can get that out so that you can be living the most loved, the most connected, the most free life that you can. Yeah. Now, for those of you who don't know what the Father Series is, just to give quick clarification, it's a 12-part audio e-course. So it's over 12 hours of audio content uh, dealing with father wounds from why do, why do uh, relationships with our fathers matter, how fathers affect sons, daughters, um, how to do healthy confrontation. Like we go on this entire journey, this entire process of helping people find out what, what, what wounds they have in their life, yeah. discover what's important, discover how to be powerful in communicating those things, um, walk through a journey of grieving and ultimately forgiveness. Yeah. And along with it comes a 140 page workbook, uh, that will lead you almost by the hand on this journey of reconciliation. Absolutely. Yeah. So you can go check out the pre-order on Justin and Abby. That's Justin and And, uh, you can go on there. We actually created a special five pack bundle yeah. that if you choose to do it with a group of people, we, we built into the workbook an actual leader's guide to lead a small group because we actually believe that going through emotional healing like this with a tribe or a community of Absolutely. people yields like some of the greatest depths of transformation and healing because all of a sudden you're having to be vulnerable and invite people into your process and you get something out of other people's process. So there's even like a $300 savings right now yeah. if you were to do a five pack bundle and take a group through the process with you as well. The other that. thing I just wanted to mention, if you and your husband have listened to these sex episodes and you're like wanting to grow your sex connection and you're wanting to grow your intimacy um, it'd be great to do a series like this, not because as not because you're going to talk about sex and your dads, but because the emotional intimacy of getting known, of It'll bringing perpetuate. your walls down, and that is the basis of what healthy sex lives are built on. It's built on intimacy and connection. So if you want to unlock your heart and unlock your partner's heart and actually feel that connection over shared intimacy, we think it'd be really valuable. Yep. And that pre-order lasts until June 16th, 2019, which Father's is Father's Day. Day. And then we start shipping out after that. So after Woo! Father's Day and you've all been like, ah, I realized that all these pains with my dad when Father's <laughs> Day came up, all of a sudden you get to go, but the Father Series is here to take care of that. hundred <laughs> percent. We got you covered. So, um, you guys, if you haven't yet, go uh, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. Go Husbands, share this with your wives. Women, share this with your friends. Start having conversations yeah. about yeah. this subject with each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then go to facebook.com slash uh, the, the Connected, Connected Life. Life podcast. And anything else? That's it. Follow us on Instagram, Abby Stumball, ABI Stumball. And Justin Stumball and Pizzi, P-I-E. T-Z-E. Duffield. D-U-F-F-I-E-L-D. Is that woo, right? Woo. Woo, woo. You, you, that better be right. <laughs> <laughs> I've been married 12 years yeah. almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, PT. Yeah. Sign us off here. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was lackluster. Lackluster. I'm so sorry. Thank you for listening to The Connected Life. We hope that you have a connected day and a connected sex life oh my god that's so <laughs> cheesy goodbye bye